pretty fantastic fight the last time out. Um, I guess was that was that a, a big one for you in terms of the result and, and the performance? Uh, yeah, I mean, at this point in my career, I'm kind of like facing guys, names that I came up watching. So it's always a feather in the cap to go out and get a win over a guy like Tyson Nam. But uh, we're, we're onward and forward, you know. I've got Rogerio Bontran in front of me, so, you know, honestly not giving much thought to the last performance. Nice. It, the change of opponent, I guess, you get Rosario Bontarine now. You didn't. Um, what did you think? I mean, would, does that when you get an opponent change like that, I mean, do you consider it all like, ah, maybe we should move and give ourselves a little more time or something like that? Yeah, I mean, we, we took everything into consideration, all, all, all of the options. Uh, ultimately, I decided that I wanted to fight in Houston, you know, and strangely enough, I'm, I'm the only guy on this card with uh, Houston roots. I live here, and uh, I don't think that that was necessarily on purpose. It just is how it worked out. But, uh, yeah, I, I was willing to do what it took to stay on this card, and uh, I, I said yes to every name that they had on the roster. You know, so I'm happy that Bontarin was able to accept and, and uh, it makes sense. It's a fight that makes sense. Why was it important for you to stay here? Was it for you, like, you know, you want the experience or was it for, like, you know, your friends and family who probably don't get a chance to see you compete? Like, what, what was important about it? No, all for me. All, <laughs> all for me. No, I, I had put in a lot of work for uh, preparing for Alex Perez and felt that it would be uh, – it wouldn't be good if I just let all that work go to, to waste. And, yeah, sure, we could have moved the fight, but I really, really liked the idea of fighting here in Houston. And, uh, you know, you, you never know what's going to happen out there. Bontran's a tough guy. Alex Perez is a tough guy. They're, pro they're pretty similar, so I, I felt like it wasn't like I had to, you know, go back to the drawing board or anything. So, yeah, uh, it, it worked out the way it did. I was, I was willing to do anything to stay on this card, though. Have there been any challenges associated with it? I mean, I know this was a tough ticket to get. Uh, you know, has there been you know more requests of your time or more demands? People don't understand. Like, hey, I'm on fight week. Leave me alone. Sure not. I've been doing this 13 years now, and um, I've got a lot of people. Whole trailer park's going to be out to come watch me. So, but they know what the deal is. They know uh, they leave me alone. So. I've uh, been doing it for a long time and uh, looking forward to seeing all my friends and family and everybody in between. And yeah, I, I feel like everything I've ever done has kind of accumulated to this. And in the past, I've let myself down in big moments and I've put in the legwork for this. So, you know, uh, victory never guaranteed, but we're going to go out there and scrap. Like, had you, had you been watching Monterey before? I mean, did you, did you know much about his game bef before you were given the offer? Yeah, I got my eye on all these guys. So. Yeah, I'm watching them all. He's good. He's tough. Uh, big, strong kid. We're fighting at 35. Watching him walk around. He looks. He looks every bit of it. He's a big boy, so I, I anticipate he'll be physical and uh, try to bring it to me early. But yeah, let's go out and sort it out. I know what he has to offer. Uh, I have. I have yet to display everything that I can do. I feel like, and what better time than this weekend, Saturday night? Obviously, a pretty quick turnaround after a tough fight. I mean, is that what, what's the plan moving forward here? Is this kind of the, the pattern you want to get in now? Is, is fighting more frequently? You know, I think I think now I've established myself with this company, hopefully, and uh, obviously we got to keep keep it rolling, keep winning. But I've been busy my entire career. You know, I've been like I said, I've been doing this for I've been fighting competitively for 12 years, and I have over 36 fights, MMA fights, as well as boxing and kickboxing and grappling on top of that so I've always kept a busy schedule and it's just been hard to get my footing and you know we, we, we had to come through the flyweight purge and early on when you're 0-2 in the UFC they're not knocking down your doors to get back out there but uh, Saturday night I'm gonna go out and continue to display that I'm a world-class martial artist have a good time uh, try, try and let it loose out there and I anticipate yeah we'll be back in here again Quick turnarounds are nothing new to me. I'm a fighter. Nice. Last thing for me, what's ideal for you? I mean, I'm sure it sure would be nice to go out there and throw one punch and the fight's over and you can go home. But, you know, a, a back and forth scrap in front of 15,000 people with the, with the fans back in the building uh, could be a pretty special environment too. So what, what would be ideal? Would you want to go out and dominate or maybe have one of those brawls that brings that Houston crowd to life? I'm ready to go 15 minutes. Uh, you know, at this point in my career, I know that, 
they're, they're, you know, I'm not gaining anything by going out there and getting my face punched off. So I'm going to try and do it seamlessly if I can. But, uh, yeah, as I said before, no promises for victory, but maximum effort, and I'm going to go out there and scrap. Matt, right here. Uh, he obviously has a pretty extensive background in uh, submissions, with his submission skills. You have a lot of submission victories in your MMA career. So how would you compare your grappling skill set to his? My uh, cornermen, they like to remind me that I'm still a purple belt. <laughs> I've been doing this for a very long time. Uh, yeah, I, it's, a, it's a dangerous game to, to toil. The, those are in, in the chaotic moments, in, in, the, in the scrambles, that's when I find my best stuff. So, yeah, I know he's a great grappler. I think, I think if, his, if his game plan is to come in and grapple it, he should, he should uh, work to slow it down because in those moments I find tricky stuff. And uh, we, we've got that part of the game sharpened up too. I'm ready to grapple. I'm ready to strike. We can do it all. Well, speaking of the striking, what do you make of his uh, striking skill set in the octagon? He's, uh, he's, he's pretty short, but he's got long arms. So, uh, and he, he covers a good amount of distance. And he likes to fight from a strange range. So. Uh, I, I think in the big cage, you know, I'm going to try and get out there, touch him with my jab, and, and just uh, feel, out, feel out the distance and the range a little bit. But he, he can bring it. I mean, he throws thumpers. They're uh, hard punches. Uh, when, he, when he goes, he rips it. You know, and if you're standing there and, uh, you know, on, on the center line and you catch something hard, he could hurt you for sure. This guy's physical. Uh, I don't know if his, his striking is as nuanced as mine, but... I mean, we're fighting in four-ounce gloves, so uh, I'm not taking anything away from the guy. I know he can. I know he can crack. I know he can swing him, but so can I. And then I, I don't know if you watched the Jacksonville card, but it seems like a lot of the fighters, when they first made that walk out, the the crowd reaction kind of hit, caught them by surprise. They couldn't remember how it felt. Like Anthony Smith, I think, stopped and like looked around for a bit. Have you envisioned that moment, especially being in your hometown, walking out there? Yeah, yeah, I feel like I've seen it, I've felt it, I've dreamed it. Uh, I don't know how I'll react to it because, to be honest, I've never fought in front of a capacity crowd like this. And uh, this will be, you know, a 35-fight vet, but this, this will be something new to me to walk out in front of 19,000 fans. And like I said before, you know, everything I've ever done, I feel like has added up to this. And I'm not going to let this moment be too big for me. I'm not super concerned with how many people will be there, but you know I've earned this. I look forward to it, and I've seen it, and I've felt it. I've dreamed it. So yeah. Then finally, uh, this is of course a bantamweight. Has fight week been any more enjoyable, knowing you don't have to cut those last ten pounds? Yeah, I had breakfast this morning, so y'all could probably tell I'm in a little bit better mood. Uh, yeah, I feel good. I mean, and honestly, there's not much weight, uh, weight difference. Like today, I'm I woke up at 143. I think if this was a regular week, I'd be more like 139. So a couple of pounds difference. And when I walk in there, I'll, I'll be carrying about a five to six extra pounds. Nothing crazy, but yeah, it feels good. And I feel like I can compete at 35 too. I've stated that before. And uh, I'm a natural flyweight, but you know, I have the dimensions to compete. And uh, this, this will be interesting. You know, I'm one and one as a bantamweight in the UFC. I go and I beat Bontran. That'll be two and one. Uh, I'll have a winning record in two different divisions. And for a little trailer trash kid from northwest Louisiana, that ain't that bad. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, man. So, so is this a permanent move to 135, or are you just filling it out still? No, this, the, the, the reason that we're doing 35 is Bontran took it late. He took it on a month's notice, and he's a big guy. So I think he has trouble making the 25 weight limit, and, uh, you know, I can relate to that. So, yeah, let's do it at 35. What did you do during COVID that improved since you had a whole year off that you weren't expecting to have off from live competition? You know, COVID was tricky because I just had my daughter, and uh, we were Congrats. Home. Yeah, thank you. We were, it's the best. We were hunkered down at home, kind of quarantined anyways with her. She was born in February, everything kind of hit in March. And uh, yeah, I put on my baby weight and uh, you know, the, we, we had a lot of stuff where, where there wasn't a lot of training going on. He, even here in, in Texas, it was, it was difficult to find training. So uh, it, was, it was a tricky time, but I value that time because I had 
great opportunity to spend with my, my wife and my daughter. And uh, yeah, again, it's all accumulated to here and now. And there were hardships coming back from COVID too because I got so heavy. I got, I got really heavy, but uh, we made the adjustments and we've been putting in a good work routine and I feel good, we're good. With, with Texas and Louisiana being real big combat sports venues and people get into fights, do you watch other, like, did you watch the Canelo fight last week? I saw the highlights of the Canelo fight. I've got a bedtime at about 10 p.m. because I have a one-year-old. So uh, I did want to stay up and watch him, but I had to uh, wake up the next morning and watch the highlights. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's great that we're back to business here in Texas and Louisiana. And it's so important that these fights continue. And I keep, again, I keep my eye on a lot of these fights. I commentate fights in Louisiana. I've recently commentated fights in St. Louis as well. So it, it's good to see these shows back ripping. And one thing that I can say from, from sitting in my seat is the talent out here, man, there are, there are amateurs doing things that, that you wouldn't believe. And I think the COVID, uh, for, for whatever reason, it, it has compounded these kids. The, the kids that work and, and actually put in the time, they got better during that time. And they're the ones getting the opportunity to go out and fight on these shows that are just now breaking, and they look good. So, you know, COVID's been unfortunate for a lot of us that there are some uh, silver linings to it, but the, the fight game is ripping, and these young kids are hungry. And everybody needs to continue to support their, their local MMA events because you're literally watching the next stars just fight at the dang convention center. <laughs> and final question for me, how big a deal is to go and find a way to get a spectacular finish since we starting to see at the, on these big cards since we came back, we had 261. We had three spectacular finishes in the main event. We had Canelo breaking people's eye bones last week. Does that, as a fighter, inspire you? Or like, boom, I gotta get, because people kinda, as the, the quote Jorge Masvidal, they, they crave that violence. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think it would be a mistake for me to uh, put thought into looking for anything spectacular. I think that's been a mistake in, my, in the past I've made. When I was younger, coming up in the UFC, uh, I, I just wanted to show everybody how outstanding I was. And uh, I just got to go out there, put in 15 focus minutes, and I'm a mother fricker. You know, I'm going to go out there and whip this guy. And it, it'll be fun. I've put in a, a lot of work. Uh, I believe in, in my skills. I believe that the way I fight is aesthetically pleasing and nothing's changed. We're gonna go out there, bite down on the mouthpiece. I'm not looking for anything spectacular, but if I'm focused, spectacular things may occur. Are there any names on the local scene we should be looking out for? Names on the local scene. There's a kid from Lafayette, AJ Fletcher, who has been killing it, looks really good. Another guy that just comes to mind uh, from here in Houston, Cameron Graves, a kid that I've spent some time with, really sharp good pair of hands on him. Uh, I went out to St. Louis, Missouri to watch a flyweight that I used to train with years ago and he's making his pro debut. His name's Danny Morarity. And uh, all these guys, all three of those names, they can do it in the big show. And there's, there's hun I mean, I've got, I could come, I could sit up here and speak for days about the local talent from my area, specifically that, that little region of Houston and uh, Louisiana. There's guys coming, so y'all pay attention. Thank y'all. Uh, shout out to my wife. I love you.